Hi, I'm Adele and this is Billboard. I made up my mind Don't need to think it over If I'm wrong, I am right Don't need to look no further This ain't a love My album goes number one was the, the most amazing thing that has and ever will happen for your debut album to go to number one. It was incredible. And I'm, I'm really bad at kind of expressing how I feel. So I don't like gushing, but it is amazing. I don't think you'll ever kind of get used to something like that. It's quite unlikely that you're going to end up being a singer for your career. And the kind of artists I like, they're top 10, you know, they're Britney and they're Spice Girls and they're Backstreet Boys. And to think that I could possibly do what they do, not on such a big level, <laughs> like, you know, like all the dance routines, but was ridiculous. I just used to sing because I liked it. Like, and I still do sing because I like it, but never thought it would kind of get me anywhere. Um, so yeah, when XO offered me a record deal, that's when I thought, oh, okay, maybe I could get away with it. I had no idea who XO were. Um, and the only record company I knew was Virgin, because of the Spice Girls. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they were emailing me, and it was also my 18th birthday, and I was finishing college and my birthday party. So I was just kind of distracted and and like I said, I'd never heard of Excel, but then a very good friend of mine, Jack Pignate, who signed to Excel, um, emailed me saying, they are a real record label, like do White Stripes and MIA. And then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> and I went down for a meeting. I, I studied music from 14 to 18, and part of the course was to learn and how to record yourself, um, you know, demos and stuff. And I used to give them to my friend Lyndon. And yeah, he put them on MySpace in, in 2004. So like way before anything was going on, and I, was, I wasn't even bothered, I was like, whatever. Um, and then MySpace got huge and then I got addicted to it by like emailing and networking and finding friends and stuff on there. Yeah, and then I got signed. Simple as. Imagine you're chasing someone down the street and they're not there, you're just chasing what they're running on, which is a pavement, aka a sidewalk. The album's all about one boy and we had a fight in a club and I got thrown out. I punched him and um, yeah, I was running down Oxford Street and it was really early, like really early, really late, whatever you want to call it. And I was running on my own. There was no one in front of me and I was just chasing this pavement. And it's a metaphor, you can't always chase a pavement, obviously. But I was chasing a pavement, there was no one there. But the gay community think I'm really dirty because it turns out, if you go on Urban Dictionary, it turns out, it turns out it's some really dirty like sex position. But I never knew that. I never knew that. And everyone thinks I'm dirty, but I'm not. <laughs> Should I just keep on chasing me? I think it's important for an artist to do well everywhere. I mean, here's a priority. It's not my only priority. Like, you know, I want as many people as possible to hear my music. That's why I want to come here and do the work and get my music out to lots of people. But I don't think it's the end of the world if you don't do well in America. I'm only 20. I've got 20 more years to try and do well in America. But, you know, if it doesn't happen on this record, maybe it'll happen on the 8th. <laughs> I've got time, whatever. I just want to be happy. Be happy, still making music. I'll never not make music, but I would love to be behind the scenes as well. Um, I've had my fingers in lots of different pies. I want to be behind the scenes as much as I am up front. But it's amazing that I've even got a chance to just be here and sit here and talk. <laughs>